Hi folks, this is Kwabana from OpenMV, and today I'm going to be talking about a new feature for the OpenMV Cam H7 Plus that allows you to set the readout window on the OV5640 camera sensor so that you can massively increase the frame rate you get from the camera sensor. By default, the OpenMV Cam H7 Plus with the OV5640 camera sensor is limited to about 25 FPS at lower resolutions. This is because the camera sensor has a large number of pixels it has to process in order to downscale 5 megapixels to um, QVGA um, like 160 by 120 or 320 by 240. Um, and because of that, it just can't run fast. However, you can bypass that by setting a cropped window inside the sensor area that allows you to read out pixels faster. Um, in particular, we added a new function called set readout window to the OpenMV Cam H7 Plus and H7, if you want to attach a OV5640 to a regular H7, that allows you to specify a readout area within the sensor pixel array of the OV5640. When you do this, you can massively increase the frame rate that you get reading from the camera sensor by skipping lots of pixels that you don't need to read out. Um, the downside of using this approach is the image is heavily cropped to just that area you want to see, so you cannot get full frame rate and full resolution at the same time. But using this approach, though, you can get a kind of balance. In particular, I have, a, excuse me, I have an example script coded up that shows off this balance. Um, in particular, this script is called the 100 FPS IR LED tracking script. And so it's an example script that shows off how to use set windowing to home in on an object and track that object centroid and then lock on to that centroid and keep track of that um, at a far distance at a very high FPS. Um, so I'm going to run the script right now and it's just kind of staring into my bedroom and right now it's running at 25 FPS. So a few things to note, we set the exposure to be very very low. This is so we can um, you know, get the frame rate to be really high and then we're going to be tracking just general purpose bright objects um, between 128 to 255. Note that when you set the exposure low, typically the uh, brightness of even pure white objects that would be uh, pure white in normal uh, scenes uh, don't appear pure white anymore. So you have to set a larger range there. Um, anyway, so you have a searching resolution and a tracking resolution. The searching resolution is going to be um, basically we're going to look for an object at a lower frequency. And once we find it, we'll switch to the low, um, a higher, much higher FPS tracking resolution that will let us uh, kind of get uh, screaming fast frame rates. Uh, finally, we have something called tracking edge tolerance. Um, so you don't want to call set windowing um, repeatedly over and over again because if you do, you're going to uh, cap your max frame rate at about half of what you can normally do. Um, so the tracking edge tolerance allows you to define um, how far away that tracked object gets from the edge of the field of view before you move the window to keep track of it. Cool. Um, so let's show off this script. So I'm just going to put my camera here. Um, my phone camera and just turn on the uh, regular uh, flashlight in the back of my phone. And as you can see, the OpenMV Cam H7 is able to track this uh, IR light. And so as I move around in the field of view, the camera is tracking it pretty much perfectly um, and keeping that in the center. Um, so right now, I'm about eight feet, uh, no, 10 feet away from the camera, and I can move backwards and backwards and backwards, and it still locks onto this and keeps it in the field of view. So I'm moving all around my bedroom right now. I'm able to move the camera up and down at a fast speed, um, move it to the left and right, up, down, whatever. The OpenMV Cam H7 is going to track it kind of perfectly and keep that locked on in its field of view. Now, you're actually able to go to the extrema, so you can kind of push the camera up beyond where it can see, and you'll see that it loses tracking of it. And as you can see, when I'm near the extrema, it's going to say Y limit reached. Um, so if you actually attach the OpenMV Cam H7 to a pan and tilt gimbal now, um, you can use the error, met there's an error function that we return um, that represents the difference between um, what the window that I want to set the, uh, where I want to set the re virtual resolution and then where the driver forces you to go. Um, and using that error method, you can then steer a servo to also help keep track of um, a uh, object. And so using this method plus a servo pan tilt gimbal, you can have a very, very high FPS, um, really, really good tracking system if you're opening VCAM H7 Plus. Cool. And so this will work to track this IR beacon. Um, you can make the uh, search resolution as large as you want. 
Um, there's no problem with that, and you can make the tracking resolution larger too if you're okay with the frame rate taking a dive. Um, to use this script in a, a real application, you're going to need to kind of fiddle with the constants and figure out how to do um, more uh, filtering methods. Right now, the script just looks for the densest object and tracks that. But if you want to like handle um, complex scenes or anything where there might be different uh, bright objects in it, you'll have to put some more effort into the logic. But there's uh, plenty of time when you're running at about 110 hertz to do whatever kind of filtering you need in Python. Cool. And so, yeah, as you can see, we're pretty much hitting 100 FPS the whole time while tracking my, my uh, cell phone's uh, light. And so just to explain this a little bit more, um, so what we're doing is we reset the sensor, you put the searching resolution on, we're in grayscale. Um, you need to turn off auto gain and auto exposure. Uh, we are heavily violating how OmniVision designed its cameras um, using this feature. So if you leave auto gain and auto exposure on, they will oscillate like crazy because we are doing something, they, we are using the camera in a way it is not quite meant to be used for, but that it can do. Um, and then you need to get the um, readout resolution. So the way I designed this driver, um, the uh, readout window will kind of tell you the camera raw pixels width and height. Um, and so this, this code, for example, um, there's no mention of the OV5640 except in this comment up and above. Uh, so we can kind of use the same script for future cameras that um, have different resolution windows and et cetera. Um, cool. So anyway, after that, take a picture, um, find blobs initially to find the, the original blob to track. Um, once that blob is found, draw a box around it. And then we have some functions here. And what we're going to do is we will center on that blob. Um, once we've centered on that blob, we can then switch to center on that blob will do two things. It'll find the uh, blob's position within the sensor, sensor pixel array and then basically um, shrink the resolution to center on top of that. Once we do that, then we can um, you know track that blob at a lower resolution. If we lose track of it, we switch back to our searching resolution, keep looking. Um, and if we don't lose track of it, we will um, find the blob, draw a box around it, get the mapped coordinates. Um, so there's a lot of uh, trickery with um, how coordinates are dealt with between mapping the blob from the uh, viewport, which is what you see in the um, window here, um, the resolution the camera's processing, and then the actual area where the pixels are on the sensor itself. Um, that's a little bit tricky, but we have uh, example code that shows off that math calculation. Um, finally, um, once we do that, then we just compute a, a difference between the you know, center of the blob and the edge of the image so that we know how much we should move to recenter it um, if uh, it's starting to get off center. Um, we don't want to do that constantly, of course, because if we keep recentering um, every frame, we won't be able to hit 120 FPS or so. Um, as for centering on the blob, that's um, pretty simple. So the, the really complex thing is trying to map the centroid location to um, where, that, where the uh, centroid is on the pixel area. But um, once we have that mapped X, uh, CX and CY, um, we can just switch the frame size, um, set up the XY and width and height for uh, changing the, reading, the readout window, change it, and then we can just check to see um, did the driver actually accept our change. Um, we have a function called uh, get readout window that'll tell you exactly what the readout window was set to after you tried setting it. Um, and the benefit of this is this is how you can tell whether or not you know, you're kind of reaching the limit of what is possible um, using the, uh, the, this ability, and that helps you again for using the steering servo. Uh, finally, um, we have uh, the get mapped uh, centroid feature. Um, so this is doing a lot of uh, mapping math. Um, pretty much uh, knowing how the driver works was essential to write this, so that's why I took the effort of putting this together and just getting this demo script out there so folks don't have to figure out how this works. Um, the best way to say it would be, though, um, so when you get the readout window, this this basically gives you a width and height, which is a uh, which is a viewport, um, a, a width and height into the um, the sensor array, and then an X Y offset from the center of that pixel array in the camera. Um, the image you actually see, though, um, this viewport, by the way, for at least the OV five six forty, does not have to be equal to the resolution you see. So the viewport could be like a six forty by four eighty image, and your resolution that you're looking at could be 160 by 120. And so what will happen is the camera will downsample that viewport to equal the final resolution that you receive. Um, so you, had, you kind of have to undo that and figure out the ratio between these two. Um, the OpenMVCAMS drivers always do um, uh, scaling 
while preserving aspect ratio, but fitting it within the window. So that's what this code kind of figures out what that ratio should be. And then once you do that, you can um, work backwards to take the centroid, find where that centroid is in reference to the center of the, um, the kind of uh, image that you have, um, and then scale that up to map it to the size of the pixels on the viewport itself, which is on the sensor's pixel plane. Um, once you do that, then there might be an offset because when you um, use the scaling ratio method, um, if the uh, ratio between the viewport and the actual image itself aren't um, uh, perfect, uh, you'll end up with some offset to the left or right, so that corrects for this. And then finally, we can um, displace ourselves to the actual center of the sensor array, plus whatever displacement we had from previously moving the window around. Um, pretty complex, but uh, it's already written for you. So you can just use this method to move around the viewport um, trivially. Anyway, um, yeah, so I hope folks uh, are really get jazzed about this new feature. Um, it can process, so this can handle also um, other you know, things to track. So you don't have to just track um, IR LEDs. Um, I'm showing off that example again, though, because it really does hit the high FPS. But if you shrink the resolution, um, generally, you can get about 50 FPS to um, 70 FPS or so, not exactly 100 unless you lower the exposure, but um, using a small resolution, a smaller um, uh, resolution though, you can get that higher FPS and you can choose to track instead of a blob, you could track a April tag or um, whatever type of object that you want to center on. Um, anyway, thank you for watching this long video. Um, and uh, yeah, um, thanks for being um, interested in OpenMV. Oh yeah, one last thing. Notice the CX and CY are within the uh, camera's um, uh, coordinates. So this is, uh, since this camera does 25, 259, it's a five megapixel camera, so it's about 2,000 pixels, uh, 2,500 pixels by about 2,000 pixels. Um, so CX and CY have that kind of level of precision here. Cool. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.